Saturday, guys. I'm sorry my upload schedule has been all over the place, but you know, it is what it is. I'm prioritizing a different project, and so these kind of videos have fallen a little bit by the wayside. I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. But cheers. Happy Saturday. Just a heads up. There's Cubby. He's looking outside. So yes, it's a beautiful like 55 to 60 degree day outside. It's sunny and I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so that means that everybody's like outside doing stuff. And I think that my brothers and sister-in-law are out back right now getting ready to dig a trench. I should be out there checking it out, but they said I'm in here. They th I think they think I'm still sleeping. We'll let them go with that. But yes, it is the end of March. It's the 30th of March. Can you believe that? And I want to talk to you about my April TBR. I've never done a TBR video before, mostly because I'm a mood reader. And so it's really hard for me to be like, this is what I want to read this month because... Who knows? I struggle so much with things. Like, I was supposed to be doing a readathon this week, and you know what I ended up doing? Nothing. I read, like, nothing because I was like, I set myself a bunch of things I wanted to read and then just didn't read them because that's not what I wanted to read. So, I read nothing. So we'll talk about that in my March wrap up. Anyways, I wanted to talk to you about what I wanted to read in April, and it's less of like a this is what I want to read and more like, I want to show you my library problem, okay? Because I have a problem when it comes to the library. Right now, I have 36 books checked out and five are waiting for me at the library right now. Five? What happened? Oh my god. See, this is what happens is I put things on hold and then they all show up at once. So I'm going to the library later today to pick these holds up, which I'm super excited. There's some good things I'm picking up, but they will not end up on my April TBR because they won't be due until the beginning of May. So those are a later me problem. But I have 36 books checked out right now. Four I'm going to return already that are sitting over in my return box. So that takes it down to 32 checked out and a bunch of them are due this month. Like I said, I usually end up like putting things on hold and then a bunch come in at once. So they all have the same due date. Yeah, that becomes a problem. Okay, if you check out six books on one day, all those six books do the same day generally. My mood reading self is like, I want to read this. So I put it on hold. I pick it up. Mm, I don't know if I want to read it right now. So I have a problem and we're going to talk about it today. <laughs> and we're going to look at all the books my library says I have to return in April and I'm gonna try to do a really big like library focus because I have enough of like so many different genres that I should just be able to grab something and be like okay I'm gonna read this now this fulfills my mood reading and on average I read about 11 books a month which is a lot to some people not a lot to other people to me it's like a perfect amount I have 19 books here so likelihood is high I'll get through a lot of these if not most of them but some of these guys already their time is up so Let's start talking about what I have to return and we're going to go by time. So I have, like I said, I have a couple books that are overdue, but this next stack is due on the 2nd of April and it's the 30th of March. So I kind of had to be like, we're not getting to some of these. One of these is a DNF and the rest of them, I have different reasons. So let's just go through it. All right, let's just go through it. So we're going to start with Boulder by Eva Baltazar, translated by Julia Sanchez. This was a Carrie Cakes, Carrie Can Read recommendation. I thought it was really interesting because this is about a, I believe it's a lesbian couple and one of them wants to have a baby. The other one's not really sure, but they go through with it. And this is supposed to be like, I don't know if it's a more realistic look at pregnancy and motherhood, but it is definitely like not the motherhood is magical and wonderful look that you get in a lot of media and a lot of people. So I really wanted to give it a try. I only read like the first two pages, but if you look at the formatting, Ooh, it's just like block. It's literal like squares of text. So I tried to give it a go. It wasn't going to work. I wanted to do the audiobook, but my library only offers the Spanish audiobook. So I'm going to see. I might give this one another go later when I'm in more of like a serious mood. But for now, the library says it has to be back in three days. So I'm just taking it to the library today. I might pick this one back up again though. And then I've got All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. So all of us villains. This is the first in a duology. I got them both at the same time, which why did I do that? So I read neither of them. This is like, they say it's like Hunger Games meets something else. I don't know, like gothic-y. So the idea is really interesting to me. I just was never like in a dystopian mood. I will get this one again. 
Only the first one this time, though. I'm not going to check them both out at the same time. I was just like, what if I love it and I want them both immediately? Like, so stupid of me. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> so I do want to read this. This was another, I think, Carrie Cakes that she read at once. And I was like, that sounds so interesting. So I've had it for like two or three months at this point. The library says I have to return it. Probably going to put another hold on it, but maybe like delay it until late May. <laughs> then this one's a little bit sad for me, but this is So Let Them Burn. Do I really have to return this one? <laughs> I don't want to. I have to check. I have to see what my library, they sent me a thing that was like a courtesy notice. Oh, it is. It's due. Sometimes my library will be like, this cannot be renewed. And other times they'll just be like, this is due on this date. And so it's hard for me to tell what is due and what is going to be renewed. But this one is not going to be renewed. I have to return this one. Somebody put a hold on it. I'm really bummed. I will be putting a hold back on this one. This is supposed to be, I think, this has got dragons and dragon magic and and I think it's like Jamaican like Jamaican stories what is the word I'm thinking of? like not fairy tales but um it's based on like Jamaican lore I don't I can't think of the word um, in my brain right now hopefully I'm beaming it to you right now and you know what I'm talking about so this one will be getting a new hold put on it <laughs> which you're going to see a lot in this little stack. So this is by Camilla Cole. This was a, I think she was a debut this year. It says a dragon took her sister. She'll set the world on fire. A uh, library sticker. So I love when they do that. <laughs> yeah, something about her sister, dragons, magic. So I'm excited for this one, but it is going to go back to the library today. Then I have, I feed her to the beast and the beast is me by Jameson Shea. I was going to read this for um, the 2024 Trans Rights Readathon that just happened this last week. I did not get around to it, but I found out in researching this author that this is at least a duology because I think she's saying she has a second one coming out. So I was kind of like, you know what, I'm going to let this one go for now as much as I really want to read this. I'm going to wait until the second one is a, at least a little bit closer to release. This is about a ballerina who um doesn't feel like she's getting the same opportunities as other ballerinas she's probably not and so she makes like a deal with a devil or something like that and the paris catacombs are involved it says as she descends into godhood and the mystifying underworld below she is faced with the ultimate choice continue to break herself for a world that doesn't love her back or succumb to the darkness that wants her exactly as she is monstrous heart and all. So this one I will definitely be picking back up. I've heard only good things about this. So I'm very excited and I am excited to read the second one too already. So I'm going to wait for that. Then the last one that's going back to the library today is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This one I'll be putting another hold on as well. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's a scary story, I guess. I think they made a movie about it and everybody says the book is better. So I don't like watching horror movies. I like watching YouTube videos about horror movies and I like reading the books that they're based on but I can't like visual media is different to me like there's something about seeing it versus reading it I just can't I can't do the the seeing thing <laughs> so then the last book that's due on the second is Bunny by Mona Awad and I've started reading this one barely but I'm gonna try and finish it because I really want to read it. it took me a long time to get my hands on it and then once I got my hands on it my mood reading self was like, oh, but we got other things to read. So I'm going to read this. I'm reading it. I've already started it. I'm going to go out today, go to the library, and I might stop and hang out somewhere and try to chug through a little bit of this today. So yeah, Bunny by Mona Awad. If you don't know, this is about a woman and a group of girls. She calls them twee rich girls. There's like four of them. They call each other Bunny. I've only read one chapter and they're already like super... <laughs> just like super, uh, I can't words today. Anyway, she gets invited to hang out with them at their smut salon and it sounds really creepy. So I'm really excited to give this one a go and I'm going to this weekend. That's everything that's due on the 2nd of April. So like I said, I'm only keeping one of these books. I'm going to try and get, get Bunny done before it's due. I also have an ARC whoop for Good Morning Darling and the author was asking for reviews to be up around the 3rd of April. So I'm going to try and work on that as well in the next couple of days. So those are my like next direct reads. I've actually started both of them. So that's what I'm working on right now. The next bunch of books are due on the 9th of April. I say bunch, but there's only two of them. And these are due back because they are new releases and there's probably other people that want them. I think, I don't know, 
So I've got Happily Never After by Lynn Painter. This one is the only one that I'm like, I don't know if somebody's got a hold on it or sometimes the library just, if it says new, they want it back to put it on their new shelf. They're not going to let somebody hold on to it for three renewal cycles. So Happily Never After, this is about somebody who I think she gets left at the altar. Oh no, she finds out that her fiance cheated again. And so she wants to call it off, but she can't call it off because of like some issues. So she hires like a professional objector and he comes to her wedding and is like, I object. So she finds out that that's a thing. And she's like, hey, I want to get in on that because love sucks, you know? And obviously like, so it's her and this other professional objector and obviously rom-com ensues hopefully i've been duped by cute covers before so i've got that by lynn painter i'm excited to give this one a read i'm always craving like a good rom com book and then the other book is emily wilde's map of the other lens which i just love that these are like hard covers but like beautiful covers um, if you're not familiar with emily wilde's this is by heather fawcett this is the second book in the emily wilde series it is about a woman who studies fairies and her co-worker who may or may not be a fairy. I'm not going to do any spoilers here, but this is the second book. They continue their adventures. <laughs> I'm very excited for it. I'm excited. Everything from here on out, I'm going to try and read. So that's why I'm like, I think I might be able to tackle them all. We'll see. Oh, somebody's getting in their truck. I'm going to wait until they leave because I feel like I can hear it. So you guys can probably hear it more than I think you can. All right. So this next bunch of books are due on the 12th. No, wait, only one of these is due on the 12th. Yeah, one of these is due on the 12th. So I have The Breakup Tour by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. Did I say that right? The Breakup Tour. And this is yet another new book. They want it back. But this is giving Taylor Swift vibes. I did see somebody review it recently and they were like, she wishes she could be Taylor Swift and they didn't like it that much, but this will be such a fast read for me. It's about like a girl who is like an up and coming singer songwriter who becomes like a huge star overnight and I don't know. I didn't even read the back if I'm being honest. I just saw it and I was like, yeah, I'll take you home. This I just saw at the library, okay? I'm excited to read this. It sounds cute from like the little bits I've read and I know people that I've seen it's not been their favorite but you know what it doesn't always have to be your favorite it just has to be fun for a little bit right so this was another one I saw at the library this is due on the 16th for me I saw this at the library and I grabbed it because this is called Nordic Visions it's the best of Nordic speculative fiction and so it's a bunch of short stories and I like speculative fiction it says this covers like dark dystopian sci-fi mythical fantasy terrifying terror terrifying horror from the rational to the eccentric they combine a deep sense of place with social criticism themes of loneliness and identity and the concern for humanity's impact on the wilderness now I do not know who any of these people are I don't know who any of them are and I'm not even going to try to pronounce some of these names, all right? But they want it back on the 16th. It's a bunch of little short stories, speculative fiction stories. And I don't think I've read a lot of, like, Nordic things. So I'm excited for this one. I have so many, like, short story collections I need to start reading. But this one will be first because it's, it's due. It's due. So this next bunch, I believe all of these are due on the 23rd. And I think all of these are you've had it for as long as you can have it. At that point, I kind of am like, do I keep them or do I just return them because I've had them for so long? But because I'm a mood reader, just because I'm holding on to something doesn't mean I don't really want to read it. It just means that like, you know, the time hasn't been right yet. You know, I gotta like be ready. Okay, I gotta be ready. I'm gonna give them their last couple of weeks and see how it goes. To start off, I have episode 13 by Craig DeLui. This, I believe, is about a ghost hunting show or something like that and they go to a spot to film their show and you know maybe things are real and this is actually pretty pretty large compared to like the other books I have to read but it looks like it's got such an interesting format I think it's formatted by like journals and transcriptions of like videos is that the right word transcriptions I think that might be like they've transcribed what's happening in videos and stuff and interviews and things like that so it sounds like a really interesting like 
read and I really want to. I just haven't been in like a really big spooky ghost horror kind of mood. This one I'm going to give a good old college try. Episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. Then I have How High We Go in the Dark. This is by Sequoia Nagamatsu. I believe this is a collection of short stories but all about like the same situation. I think this is giving me like World War Z vibes. If you didn't read the book, it's like a collection of short stories about the same apocalypse, like zombie apocalypse. Like the movie, I didn't even watch it. Did not even watch it. The book though, there's like a specific story in that book that like will sit with me forever. The pet store one, if you're familiar. But I think this is similar. This is about like the melting ice caps release a virus and the world kind of goes to trash, to trash-ish. And so this I've heard is also really sad and really intense, especially like this amusement park story in particular. I So I haven't been like prepared to read this, but I'm going to try and find space in my heart and soul for it this month or at least to start it. Because again, like I said, they're just saying you've had this for your maximum amount of time. So I feel like if I did return it, I could check it out pretty quickly. I'm going to try to at least start it and get through part of it. I don't know. This might be the kind of book that I buy so that I can move through it at the pace I feel comfortable. I'm excited to read it. I'm also very scared. So then I have Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. And if you've been following my channel since I started it, you will have heard me be like, oh, I have a vlog coming out where I read horror books and stuff. And I've been saying it since November, all right? This is supposed to be in that vlog, okay? This is one of the four books. I read two of the four that I wanted to put in that vlog. I have them all filmed, pretty much edited. It was supposed to be Saw Kill Girls and then In the Drowning Deep, which I did return to the library because I just could not find it in my heart to read that book. I started it. I couldn't do it. So I do still want to read this to finish the vlog. I can hear my nephew yelling. I don't know what he's yelling about. Maybe I should just close this window for now. Oh my god, the difference that made. So Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is like a horror novel. There's actually a monster. Young women are dying. Like, I want to read it. And I think that vlog is going to be swapped from a horror vlog to a Oops All Sapphic vlog because I am going to finish it and put it up, I swear to god. But every book in that vlog ended up being sapphic horror. <laughs> Oops. All right, except for In the Drowning Deep. But you know what? That one doesn't count because it's not in there anymore. So I want to read this this month. This is a chonker and I think that's what's been like keeping me from it. But when I look at it, like it's not a hard to read book. Like if you look at just the spacing and the size, like it might be long, but it's not like dense long, you know, like it's 400 pages, but it's not like it's not like I'm reading the Silmarillion here. This one is the only one that I'm really debating just returning. This is Britney Spears, The Woman in Me. I don't know. I want the tea and I bet you I could read this in like one sit down. I don't know, I want the tea. So I think I'm gonna give it a try. I tried the audiobook for a second when I had like the ability to test it on Spotify. I can't do it, I can't do it. I don't know, I'm just weird about voices and I couldn't do the audiobook. So we'll see if I, I make it. All right, so that is everything that has a for sure you have to return this this month. But if you have been keeping track, you'll realize that's not 19 books. Everything else I'm about to show you, they have not told me yet that I have to return it but there is a high chance I feel with these specific books that they're going to be like, yeah, this can't be renewed. So I'm just prepping myself <laughs> to get ready for that. So the first one that I think the library is going to ask for back, and that's because this is a new book, and I'm guessing somebody else might have put a hold on it, and that is The Hedge Witch of Fox Hall by Anna Bright. Hang on, somebody's very loud. Dude, it's not even that big of a car. Why is it so noisy? Anyways, and like this one is so cute. I wish I could like let you see the cover a little bit better, but um, library books are just so reflective. But look how cute that is. So this one is about a world whose magic is fading away, a hedge witch who's going to try to stop it from fading away, and a prince who is afraid of the magic or something. I don't know. I think there's supposed to be like a love triangle. I kind of hope there isn't. It's a beautiful cover. I've heard it's a fun read. So I'm looking forward to it. And this one, the library might want back on the 9th of April. So we will see if I get that notice or not. Yeah, I just need to get back in the fantasy mood. You know, I haven't been in like a fantasy mood in so long. All I've been wanting to read is like sports romance and horror stuff. I need to get back into the fantasy vibe. 
So then this is due on the 11th and I've actually already renewed it once. So, but I just feel like it's a new book. I'm expecting people to want to read it. It's called Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. A. B. Poranek. What is this about? I could not tell you anymore. I keep checking things out because I think that they sound fun and then I forget what it's even about. This is the one about the girl who makes a deal with a guy, a demon warden of the wood, and she has to go do something and survive a year and she's not the first one to attempt the bargain, but will she be the first one to succeed? Something like that. And if this is the demon of the wood, which I think he is because he's got, got antlers, this again is a teen book, but... We still have our romance, right? With the forest demon. That's allowed. We'll see. So yeah, this one is due on the 11th as of now. I thought they would want it back, but we will see because I've already renewed it. So I don't know what makes a new book one that they're like, you have to return this versus one that they're just like, yeah, keep it forever. We'll see if they ping me about that one. Then the other one that I think they might tell me to come back. This one is also due on the 12th. And that is Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. Uh, the only reason I have to believe that they're going to want this one back is because it took me a long time to get it first. And whenever it takes me a little bit to get a book, I kind of think, oh, somebody else had this book or something. So I'm kind of thinking that somebody might want this, especially because the next book is coming out in April. But my library doesn't even have the fourth book in the series let alone the one that's coming out in April that's the fifth one. So I don't know what's going to happen. But this is a sports romance. These are considered teen romance. They're really intense. All right. This one is the second in the 13 part of the series. So 13 is a player number because this is like a rugby romance. And the first one is called Binding 13. This is Keeping 13. Um, Binding 13 is like I rated it five stars. I loved that book. I was crying. I don't know. What, what is it? Do they put like drugs in these pages or something? Like what is it with Chloe Walsh? I don't. What is this? Okay. These two books, The Binding and Keeping 13, are about a young girl named Shannon. She's like 15 at the start of the story and she transfers to a private school in Ireland, I believe, around 2005. So she moves to a private school because she was getting super horrifically bullied at her previous school. Like she had to get like stitches. They were cutting her hair just really, really bad. So she moves to a new school and she's also dealing with like horrific domestic abuse. Yeah. So she ends up running into the star rugby player. Well, not running into more like he kicks a ball at her head on accident and knocks her out, gives her a concussion. His number is 13. His name is Johnny. I love Johnny. The first book is like 600 pages of just pining because he's a little bit older. He's like 17, I think. And she's 15 when they meet, 16 at some point. And he's just like, I can't do that. But there's other things going on. It's so cute and it's just sad, but it's so cute and I love them. I love Johnny and Shannon. And so this is the second book. I'm already like halfway through it, but just because of everything else, I've had to set this to the side. But I think this one might end up being like, they're like, you have to return it. And I'll be like, okay, let me just read it now. Now I have a reason. Because I set this one to the side because all I want to do is read this series. And I need to read some other things, okay? I need to mix it up. But these are also like the floppiest, giantest, like, look at how big this book is. And these are like 600 pages of words. <laughs> I feel like I'm reading the Bible. But a good, a good version. Then on the 12th, they're also going to want Colty back because it took me a long time to get this one checked out. So I think somebody's going to want this. But Colty by Marina, Mariana Zapata. This is another sports romance, but it's soccer this time. This is player coach romance. And I don't know how I feel about player coach romance, okay? I don't know if I'm going to like it. This is my first jump into that type of romance. And it's also my first Mariana Zapata as well. She has a lot of books that I think sound really good to me. I like soccer. So I want to give this one a go. And I think they're going to want it back. Because like I said, it took a long time for me to get this in my hands. I just kind of expected the spine to be broken. Nobody has broken the spine yet. Just... We'll see if I can make it. It's hard to read these books sometimes without breaking the spine. Like, I can't open it any more than this. Anyways, this is from the Salem Public Library, which if you don't know, uh, might be closing soon. 
I'll put whatever information I have down below, but I don't know why I had to find out that the Salem Public Library, which is in my library system, might be closing from somebody on Instagram who lives in Florida. Why did my own library not tell me that, you know, there's a chance that one of our major libraries might close and you should probably be involved in that? So stupid. That's a whole other issue. The last book that I think they might ask me to return. Don't judge me. This is due on the 16th of April. And it's Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. All right. My favorite tap house is doing a Twilight trivia night. Okay. Actually, in a few days. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try to skim through some Twilight. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> so I think they're going to want this back because I did have to wait to get this checked out. I had to have it transferred over here because like they're all checked out. I tried to get the audiobook. It's like a 10 week wait for a Twilight audiobook. I'm so confused. Are people still hyping up, still going for this? Like, it's still something that's so in demand. This book has been through a lot. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's it's lived a life. I don't know if I've ever seen this version before with the book character, <laughs> with the movie. We all know what Twilight is. I don't need to tell you about it. So this is the last one that I have that I think they're going to ask me to bring back. There's always a chance that, like, everything else could also, somebody could put a hold on something unexpectedly, like out of nowhere, which kind of I think happened with Boulder. I was not expecting it to be in demand, although I should have. It took me forever to get that book. Yeah, so that is my like library plan for April. <laughs> I do not have time to read anything else really. Like I have books that I've like bought that I want to read. Like I've got Beg You to Trust Me by B. Celeste and Off to the Races by Elsie Silver. I want to read both of these it's not happening. I have holds out on things. I think any hold I get should not be due until later, but there's like new releases in April that I want to read, like a new Elsie Silver and a new, um, on oh, the new Chloe Walsh, but I'm not up to date on that series yet. But there's just new releases coming out and things, so I'm struggling. Okay, I need to get through some of these. <laughs> I need to get through some of these. All right, let me see if I can do a stack here of the ones I'm actually going to read or try to read while I'm doing this. I am looking forward to when I don't have to film in this angle. I film on my webcam lately. I can't move it really. So I'm stuck in this corner, but I have like oh, so many areas that I'd rather be filming in. But just due to the space issues I have with my phone and everything, I have to film on the webcam lately. So it's a bummer. I'm hoping that by early to mid summertime, I should have like a handheld camera option and just better filming ability, I guess. So we will see. That's my hope. Okay, that's my stack. Let's see if I can do this. 14 books, not counting the arc. So 15 books is my TBR for April. Okay, here we go. I think I'm gonna have to stand up. Here are all of them. This is all of my library books that I would like to finish this month. Maybe some of them, if they get renewed, will just move on to my May TBR. This is ridiculous. Oh, I should turn them around for a thumbnail. That's what you do, right? You, you got a taunt that you have a lot of books? Yeah. So that's all of my TBR for April from my library. Yeah, what are you planning on reading this month? If you made it to the end of the book, do a book stacks emoji. That would be great. If you made it to the end of the book, the video, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm exhausted now from picking all these up. Let me know what are you trying to read the most in April? Do you also have a library problem like me? Do Are you a mood reader? Does, do you have a problem with that too? Those two things combine and together I am this. We become this. All right, well, let me know what you're up to in April, TBR wise. And I will see you guys in the next video, which should be my March wrap up. I had a really good month. I'm very excited to talk about what I read. So yeah, I'll see you guys in that video and just send your best thoughts that I finish any of these like vlogs. I'm just, <laughs> I don't have the editing in me for some of these things. Oh my goodness. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a wonderful day, evening, night whatever time zone it is. I was going to be like March, month, brunch, whatever. I was going to go into words that don't even mean anything here. So I'm going to go drink more coffee and go to the library, pick up more books. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.